Hello again. So uh, in this recording, I am going to talk about um, chapter nine in lecture eleven. So we're going to talk about circuit switching and packet switching. All right. To start, um, let me. Well, first of all, this is the first slide, and. Um, We talked so far about simple scenarios where we have either two stations, two nodes talking to each other directly through a link. And then we move to a situation where maybe multiple nodes are talking to each other using one of those multiplexing techniques. Right, so we saw that uh, scenario where we have multiple nodes here, and they all connected to a multiplexer. Multiplexer is connected to a demultiplexer, which is the reverse version of a multiplexer and I said at that, at that time that we need this to make a better use of the channels of the medium or of the link rather than having a point-to-point -point link between every pair of nodes which is not reasonable uh, we can have a multi we can use multiplexing techniques to share the link especially if the nodes don't talk to each other all the time right so we use multiplexing techniques one of the simple examples is phones right not everybody is talking to everybody at the same time so most of the time the phone is idle so multiplexing techniques is used to connect people together phones right but the same link can be used to connect uh, any pair of nodes any pair of phones right so we will see how that um, is going to come back later and we use it for for networking <clears throat> all right so um if we go a little bit further we'll see that to build a large network maybe we'll use a picture like this or an, or a you know a, um, a topology like this or a structure like this one where um we have terminals a b c d and so on and they're connected to each other through a vast network and these nodes will be our multiplexers we will call them something else later we will call them switches routers but they are sort of multiplexers right um, they take input from multiple sources and pass it to multiple sources so instead of multiple inputs and one output imagine the multiplexer with multiple inputs and multiple outputs as well right so i like to look at these devices as, as just another form of a multiplexer and with this multiplexer we can have traffic in in this case we are we are only showing the traffic coming from a host but uh, oh look at this for example e and f traffic coming from two nodes going to this multiplexer here oops here and the multiplexer can or the switch in this case can pass traffic to five or seven so it's passing um from two from two inputs to two outputs okay so um we can build more complicated network this way when we get to this point, now we have to make a decision about how to pass traffic. 
So it turns out that we have two major ways to pass traffic between any two nodes. The first technique says, well, before any traffic goes from A to E, for example, we have to book all these links. We have to book the link between 4 and 5. We have to book the link between 5 and 6. And of course, the link between A and 4 and the link between 6 and E. So we have to book all of these, reserve them, before passing traffic. This is similar to, you know, you want to go from one city to another, you call uh, the local authorities and say, well, book me the whole highway <laughs> um, so that I can travel um, peacefully between multiple points without anybody else using the same roads with me. Now we will see that this is this idea is not so good, but it was the common idea when we talked about old uh, phone systems. Old phone systems used used exactly same technique. They book the circuit from the first point to the last point or the destination. They book the whole circuit. And so the traffic, the voice, will go from A to E without anybody else sharing the traffic. And then once the conversation ends, the um, circuit is released and used for somebody else. All right. Uh, so I, I already mentioned one disadvantage of this is that once a circuit is is booked once a link is booked it cannot be used for any other communication it will be used only to communicate between a and e and nobody else right so we can do multiplexing we can go a little bit further and say well we can multiplex so we can use frequency division multiplexing or time division multiplexing to divide the channel between four and five into or the link between 4 and 5 into multiple channels. So we can use um, the link for maybe not just one, but for multiples. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, an advanced or improvement, but it's still circuit switched. All right. We will see later that we will have another technique called packet switching, where uh, no booking happens before, right? So there is no booking. Um, traffic is divided into packets, and the packets travel uh, intermixed with other packets throughout the network. So I forgot to mention in circuit switching, there is no packets, right? There are no packets. So it, imagine. Of your voice, for example, as I said before, it's used for old net, uh, old phone networks. There is no packetization of voice. You pick up the phone, you dial a number, you connect to the other side, and you start talking. And the, the it's the whole traffic goes without any packetization, without any division of the data. It just goes flowing. So there is no no splitting of data. When we talked about packet switching, now we will talk about actually the data has to be split into small packages, right? And then these small packages are sent through different links. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Now obviously for circuit switching, the technique is what, what it was widely used at some point, but it's inefficient. Inefficient, if you wonder why it's inefficient, think about the traffic example I mentioned. If you book a highway before anyone travels, say, oh, well, this highway is booked for me, I'm gonna travel through it, right? And nobody else is using it until I get to the destination. Well, most of the time that capacity is not being used. Just wasted. It's used only for one person, or in our case, it's only for one communication, one pair, right? 
um, and in some cases it is not even used by that pair right imagine we have a link between two um, data centers one on the east side of the country another is another uh, the opposite the west side of the country and that link was saved for these two data centers but no traffic is going through it because there is nothing to send right so we're wasting the link another issue is every time we need to connect we have to spend some time booking right so it's not like oh once i have data to send i'm just gonna send it no you have to book an advance you have to reserve the circuit so that's we'll call it setup connection or connection setup time right an advantage is that actually because we don't need any packetization of data the data is going f flowing without without any overhead without adding headers without adding any any anything else we just need to establish a connection and data flows transparently between the two points so that's an advantage and as i said before that was the 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 common in the days of the old phone networks all right um so how can we do circuit switching if i'm gonna go back to this example one more time you will see here in these switches we have multiple ports inputs and outputs right four here four here right and normally we will have a lot more so we'll get to the um, the concept of space division switching we talked about frequency division multiplexing and we talked about time division multiplexing before this is think of of it as a space division multiplexing right so we are actually trying to do something about connecting multiple nodes using physical connections using links okay uh, the oldest technology used for phone switches is the crossbar switch um, so with the crossbar switch we can have our phones arranged in uh, horizontal and vertical uh, ma uh, manner right so the switch the input can or the phone i mean the input can go here in one of these links one of these connections and the output can go to one of these links at the bottom right so if we have 100 phones 100 phones can be connected this way All right so if phone a wants to talk to phone b let's say phone a is at the top here and phone b is the second one at the bottom right so what we need to do is to make sure that there is a link straight connection between the two it goes like a an upside L here so what we need to do is come to this X here and make a connection right so these are what the wires here are not connected we insert something metal all right so we make a physical connection between A and B so now the traffic can go from A to B right you will see here that to connect let's say how many of these uh, five and five so th that's ten so to connect ten switches uh, phones I mean we need a hundred of these crossbars right ten by ten a hundred um, that obviously means that we need a lot of these points of contact and if i increase the number of phones they have 
so let's say they become 50 instead of 10 then I need a switch that say that has a 50 input 50 output so that's 50 by 50 that's 2500 okay. um, at some point this became impractical you cannot build switches with this kind of connections and actually at some point these were managed manually so you will I don't know if you see old movies or old pictures where actually uh, people put these connections put the put the, um, uh, the the metal or wires in these X's so that they make a connection between two points um, so we call this um, not scalable or non-scalable approach right so we cannot scale it why we cannot scale it because every time we add um, n number of phones we have to add n square number of connections all right not a good idea There is an advantage actually when you see this last line. There is an advantage is that um, we can we have this idea of non-blocking. What is non-blocking? Means that we can make any connections between any point and any point el uh, uh, else without interference, without anybody blocking anybody else. All right. So we know that let's say a wants to talk to B all right A and B can talk to each other but A cannot talk to C because it's busy talking to B right so that's put that aside but if A can talk to B C can talk to F for example no problem or, or A uh, or uh, sorry not um, A B C yeah so one of these so as long as it's not one of those occupied so a can talk to b c can talk to f d can talk to r and so on right why this happened because all of these links if i make the connection between a and b and this wire is working right the wire cannot interfere with another wire we can still carry the traffic um, between any two nodes without one of them blocking the other All right so that's the concept of and i think the diagram does not explain this very well the the non-blocking part but uh, um, th this is the idea okay um so we have a lot of disadvantages but we have one advantage which is the non-blocking part All right so uh we will see later that some advancement were made and we came up some people came up with a switch that is scalable which means it doesn't grow exponentially uh, but it has an advantage a uh, disadvantage what's being blocked so we'll call these three stage switch which happened to be later I mean, non, not the blocking part, but the three-stage switch is used even today in not not in its original form, but the concept is still alive today, even in the data modern data centers. But we'll leave that until later when we talk about data centers in in advanced courses. <clears throat> so how does it work? So we have the the name says three-stage switch. So we have first stage, we have a middle stage, and we have the third stage, the last stage. And the nodes can be arranged one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, right? So if five wants to talk to, let's say two, um, a connection can be made. So this is one connection here. Uh, so this point and this link will be used. We can go make more connections here so traffic will go across this 
middle switch and then go across all of these until it reaches 2 right so we have a line direct line between 5 and 2 right we can also have a direct line between 6 and 1 as you can see here so there is a line goes straight between 6 and 1 and the two lines do not cross right so these are not crossing this this is not a crossing point this is over one over uh, on top of the other so there is no no crossing but um let's make more connections and see if we can manage so we can make a connection between one and let's say if i go all the way here I can make a connection between one and any of these six, seven, eight, nine. Why? Because I can have a link where my cursor is going here. I can have a link. So, okay, fine. But what if seven wants to talk to three? So seven wants to talk to three. Well, it is out of luck because there is no path available between 7 and 3. And that's what we call blocking. We cannot have a path. While actually here, we can always have a path between any two nodes. Okay. Alright, so while this does not require as many connections as this you notice that we have 10 nodes and we have 20 20 um, connections right and if you count these the middle one so one two three four so you will see that they're not a hundred okay? so we don't have as many uh, connection points which means that we can scale it if we double this and from 10 become 20 we still have to increase the size of the switch but it's not gonna go square right or cube I mean yeah square square <clears throat> um, so we managed the scalability but we didn't solve the blocking and actually just as a side note even today's switches, modern switches, when you go buy a switch, you will see that one of the features that you have to look for is blocking versus non-blocking. Most of modern switches, they say non-blocking, right? If you look at their specification, they will say non-blocking. The modern technologies allow us to do switches without blocking, but some of the old switches, especially probably if you have a switch that you use at home so it's not uh, enterprise grade but consumer grade something that you can use at home uh, you may find that they have blocking so which means that if you have 12 ports on the switch you, you cannot expect that all ports can talk to all ports at the same time the problem is not big big of a deal when you talk about when when we talk about packet switching but when circuit switching if it's if there is circuit switching happening uh it's a problem so you don't see it as a big deal in ethernet switches anyway this is a side note um it's not uh, really relevant to the course here <clears throat> um we can actually mix the space division with the time division and create time multiplexed switch right so how can we do that let's go back to our multiplexer here i drew it here for a reason and let's say uh to explain i'm gonna color my nodes so i'm gonna use green red um, blue and um, well, let's use this weird color here okay so we saw that when we do multiplexing the multiplexer will take data from the green 
then take the data from the red and then take the data from the blue and from the purple and and send it the demultiplexer what it does it will take the first slot and send it to um, the first node take the second slot and send it to the second node and take the blue slot here third one and send it and finally the last one right so there is no switching here um, a always talk to one and b always talk to two and C always talk to three and D always talk to four. No switching. What if the demultiplexer can be programmed so that it flips this around? So the multiplexer sends the green, red, blue, and the gray here, but the demultiplexer rearranged them. So rearrange them so that the red goes first and then the green. Remember, we used buffers, right? So we can rearrange things. And so it rearranged them this way. This means that whatever the green is sending here, it goes to the red. or actually the other way around whatever the red is sending it goes to the green right so the red was sent his traffic in the second slot the demultiplexer rearranged it so it goes to to the to the green and the green goes to the red and the purple gray thing goes to the blue and then finally the blue goes to the last one right so we did switching so the green start or the red start talking to the green and green start talking to the red and the blue start talking to the c here start talking to four and d start talking to three right by rearranging the the time slots and we can make any kind of arrangement so we can leave it as is and let a talk to one and b talk to two or we can switch things around so now instead of taking the slots in the same arrangement and sending them or assigning them to the same output on the other end we can switch things around so we did time we did time multiplexing in this case all right so great so now i can mix the two i can do space and time at the same at the same time right so um i can so this is time division so we have a multiplexer here um, and then goes to um, another multiplexer so we'll we'll take the the inputs pass them through one of these um, time multiplexing switches they will flip the or rearrange the time slots and then they send them through another switch and then back to the other side it doesn't have to be this complicated i mean i i showed you a simple concept here so it doesn't have to be the concept doesn't have to be this complicated right um, but i can actually mix the two i don't know if it's mentioned here but i can mix the two uh, concepts with the space multiplexing and time multiplexing actually this is what i'm doing here i'm mixing the two concepts 
so I can pass traffic from here to here or pass traffic from here to here so I'm doing space multiplexing and also I'm doing time multiplexing um, by the way if you look closely at this picture um, it was drawn it looks like this part the left part is different than the right part but actually it's just the drawing somehow um, so if you flip this and make it vertical instead of horizontal you get the same mirror image right I don't know why the drawing was made to look like different it's not different so that the right side is exactly the same as the left side <clears throat> all right um, that's all good for switching traffic between ports and we can use that for circuit switching we can book these time slots or these spaces these links we can book them in advance before we send any traffic and that's circuit switching now let's talk about packet switching um, and the idea of packet switching uh, can be explained with this graph here just ignore the datagram for a second so the node um, can um, divide its file or if its data in general the message in general can divide it into smaller pieces right and now instead of booking the path in advance I can say well I'm gonna send it and let the switches let these circles in the middle decide how to pass the traffic depends on availability of the link if the link is busy we'll choose another link so you'll see here that uh, the switches decided that okay i'm gonna send packet one and two through this link but packet three went through another link and you will see here that packet one and one and two travel through one link but packet three travel through totally a different link and then they all arrived at the destination right so the advantage of that is um, if I try to draw things quickly here So this is a quick network, may not be good. Um, if I'm sending traffic and I'm splitting into packets, you can see here that I don't need to book any links in advance. These packets, one, two, three, can initially, they arrive to this node. I'll say, okay, this node has multiple choices to make. It can pass traffic through this link or this link or this link. So maybe I'll I'll choose the link that has the shortest path in between. All right? And we'll see the concept of the shortest path later. But I'm gonna send my traffic here. At the same time traffic came from this node node A also divided into packets so this node the first one it can if if this link is still busy I can choose to send the traffic through another link if it's not busy I can send it through the same link so now I can pass traffic based on availability of links and I can mix them as well. I can send traffic um, from, from one node, like the black sequence here, I can send it and then followed by uh, another packet from a, another node and so on. So the link itself is not dedicated to communicate between 
just two nodes it can be used as long as it's available it can be used by uh, to send any data from any node okay the advantage or the reason for doing this is because now my data has been split into smaller chunks and these chunks can be sent to any link based on a decision made by these intermediate nodes so the intermediate nodes decide what links to use initially in uh, in the uh, circuit switching that the diagram that we saw earlier in the circuit switching part the booking has to happen in advance so all maybe there is a centralized system that tells all of these intermediate nodes well this link is booked to pass traffic between B and C and nobody else can use it until it is released here the nodes decide by themselves the intermediate nodes decide by themselves where to forward traffic based on whatever the link is available okay um, so that's the basic idea of packet switching it says here that packets can be typically decided or di divided into a smaller small small uh, size like a thousand it could be that's not a really uh, hard number some technologies uses bigger than that some technologies users use smaller than that but the general idea is we we have small packets so we're not sending one megabyte of one megabyte file in 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 one packet we're sending small chunks but then we have to have um, we have we this raises an issue right practical issue so when we booked earlier when we said this link is booked between b and c we we send the data without any other information because the link is booked and when the link is booked uh, all the routers see okay i have traffic coming from this port i'm gonna forward it to this port because this is how the circuit is set up right and i don't need to look at the data and we saw earlier that the data is transparent so we don't need to look at it uh, the intermediate nodes don't care what it is just pass it so imagine the whole network is just one wire and this is exactly it practically the whole line the red line here is just one wire so this is equivalent to b and c having just one link right but now that after we did the packets thing so after we split the data into smaller packets the packets have to go individually to each one of these nodes intermediate nodes the black green circles that i drew right so the node because the packet can come from any source at any time they can come from a can come from b they can come from the other side and the node has to decide where to forward them no predetermined circuit so the node has to include some additional data to help the node to help the intermediate node decide where to forward them so the basic thing we add is the the destination and the source information so a packet that's going from b to c has to have the header that says this is going from c this is going to c uh, and coming from b right the reason how why to include the destination is obvious right so we we include the destination so we can we can tell um where to forward it the reason for including the source is that the destination knows where it's coming from right so the source it's not used for forwarding 
but it's used by the destination to know where the packet is coming from and also we'll see later that sometimes we need to tell the source about any change of the status of the network congestion for example so we need information about the source as well right so every packet now has to include and you already saw that but you didn't see why so so every packet has to have um, a header that includes the information we need and then data or payload and you saw in previous examples how we take a message and we split it into um, multiple smaller messages and we include the header so we talked about layers and I feel like we are going backwards sometimes we so we explained the layering and um, the encapsulation and now that we're going back and explaining why we have a layering explain and, and encapsulation but anyway so that's why we need to have header information one of the drawbacks of this technique is um, we may the packets that go in from one node to another may not all go through the same excuse me through the same link why well if you are sending a long stream of packets and during that transmission one of the links became unavailable either because of failure or because of other factors congestion for example the node may choose another link so same traffic from the same node can travel through multiple links through the network this actually can be considered one of the strengths of modern networks because it it's no matter what the the network will try to pass the traffic to the destination as long as there is there is available path right um, so you may consider that uh, an advantage but this means that the packets may arrive out of order they may some packets may choose a short link but other packets may choose a long link so if I go back here a few steps I see like one packet um, the blue and red lines they are the same in length but what if one packet goes this way through one two three four uh, three five and six they will take much longer time than the packets that travel through the blue line here so if the first packet went through one two three five and the second packet went through four five six then actually the second packet will arrive before the first packet assuming that all the links have the same delay and all of that um, so when we so we have an issue here we have to handle the situation where packets may arrive out of order packets may even go missing if they go through one link and one of those routers nodes fail the packet will be dropped disappear so it will never arrive so we have to deal with packets that are not coming at all so that's why we saw in data link protocols and later we'll see in transport protocols that we have to deal with packets um, a situation where packets come out of order so we may reject packets coming out of order in the sliding window for example right say so, well um, in go back in we cannot receive packets out of order or if we receive packets out of order then we have to have a destination that can handle that has enough buffer to handle all the packets until they all come in a nice order then we send them to the upper layers right so these are um, some of the challenges that we face when we use the packet switching 
okay somebody thought okay why don't we take advantage of the two solutions so we create so circuit switching has an advantage packet switching has an advantage why don't i combine the two concepts together and create something a hybrid that has the advantage of the two so what is the advantage of the circuit switching uh, we do the call setup once and we send the data as is without any headers without any overhead so that saves us no overhead means we dedicate most of the bandwidth or all of the bandwidth to just data there is no extra information and also the intermediate nodes don't have to think where to forward the packets because they or they they already established they already did that in packet switch oh before i forget and the circuit switching disadvantage is that when the circuit is reserved it cannot be used by anybody else so the advantage of packet switching is we don't have to reserve anything the network is dynamic it can change it can say okay i'm going to use this link uh, now but if it's become congested i'm going to use another link right so it's it's ad it's adaptive uh, and also if nobody is using the link the link can be used by other people not just reserved forever right so that's the advantages but the disadvantages we're adding more information to the data we're splitting the data and adding more information to it so if we can mix the two concepts so we can have something that um take advantage of the two so to do that we have something called virtual circuit so in the virtual circuit we still divide the data into packets right and so that's coming from the packet switching from the circuit switching we reserve the link so we see here that the link is the dotted link is reserved from the source and destination so link reservation was borrowed from circuit switching dividing the data into smaller pieces were uh, uh, borrowed from packet switching okay so now i can send the packets always through the same link similar to circuit switching but I don't have to book, I don't have to reserve this link for only one source and one destination. So that's the advantage here. So the, the same link can be used by multiple sources and multiple destination is not booked. So I'm still saying that traffic from node A to node B always going through this link, but this link is not reserved just for these two nodes can be used for others. One advantage of this technique is actually the the path, the nodes in the middle, they don't have to think that much, right? So they don't have to make decisions for every packet. The decision has been made. Decision made for every packet takes time, especially when we have millions of packets coming, right? So, and another advantage is the packets will arrive in order. So there is no possibility that packets coming going through different different paths um, just to explain the concept one more time before we move on uh, let's go back to the notes here and see um, the concept one more time of virtual circuits so imagine i have a circuit chosen to be like this to pass the traffic between a and c okay. and then uh, let's add another node here call it d and i have to uh, pass traffic between b and d right uh, with the, if i'm doing circuit switching I have to select this path, right? 
because it's the only path available between B and D that's not booked by anybody else. But if I'm doing virtual circuits, then I can say there is a shortest path between B and D. This shortest path is passing through this link, but that's okay. Two virtual circuits can occupy the same link. That's fine. Uh, the packets coming from this node and packets coming from this node, they can share the same link. They can be passed through the same link, right? Um, <clears throat> this, because this link is not just booked for one pair as we did in circuit switching. So that's the advantage <clears throat> of, the, uh, of this approach. Okay, um, this I talked about adding a header uh, to to the data, and it there was a hint that adding this header will uh, will affect the efficiency of the transmission. Right? Um, it's could be either positive or negative. So to explain this diagram, I need to um, um, I need to look at some of these examples here. Um, let's uh, let's see if I can. I'll use my notes first, and then we'll we'll look at the example. So, imagine we have uh, data going between two links, and I'll try to make the links as equal as possible. So we have these intermediate nodes A, B, and C, and we are sending data data is exactly let's say um, 6 units of length and we're trying to send it from A to B to C if I use circuit switching then all the links are booked and cannot be used by anybody else right and with circuit switching I don't have to divide my data so I can send the information uh, starting from here. Let's say the propagation delay is one unit, right? And I can send. So as soon as the first bit hits B, it can be sent directly to C. So there is no there is no waiting. B doesn't have to wait for the entire packet to arrive before sending it to C because. Remember when I said, imagine the whole thing as just one link between A and C, right? So, or between any two nodes, so it's just one link. And now I can send um, my data. So that will be the entire data. This is the propagation time, and then propagation time here again. And this is my frame time. Okay, so I send the data from A to C using two propagation time and one time frame. Okay, let's look at the other scenario where we have now packets so we need to divide our data into packets so I'm gonna draw the same diagram
and my data let's assume now that we need to split it into um, just two for for now so my uh, I think I used six here but I don't have space so I'm just gonna assume there are five units so I'm gonna split it into two and each one will add a header to it so the first packet has a header this part and it will be sent well let's assume that we are sending it from the same point here the propagation time doesn't change right it's not a factor of the size of the frame and then B cannot send the packet to C immediately it has to wait for the entire frame to arrive this is how packet switching work so it will wait for the packet to arrive and then once the packet arrives it starts completely start sending it to the destination to C in the meantime A is done sending the packet to B so it can send the second packet so it can send it at the same time here where B is busy sending the packet to C, uh, A is sending the packet to B, right? And then once the packet arrives completely to B, it can be sent to C as well. If you compare the two approaches that we have, you see that I sent my packet using slightly longer time than uh, the data the just the circuit switching all right so if i split my packet into smaller and smaller pieces what we will find let's say i split the packet into smaller pieces so instead of three i did four so what we will get is I'll use different color. We'll use time here and then the packet will will have a smaller size so it will use less TF. And then once it arrives it can be sent to the destination and A continues sending the packets one after another and as soon as the packet arrives to B it will be sent to see so we'll see here that actually I used less time the more the smaller the packet the less time overall to send the, the data from A to C up to a certain point that point is when the header becomes too big relative to the packet so that's what this diagram is trying to tell me it the and first if the packets are big and we have three links link from x to a from a to b from b to y so i used only two links but here there are three so it takes three takes this time to go from the data from a to x to a then from a to b then from b to y if I split the data into smaller, so this is two packet message instead of one packet message, it will take less time. Why? Because there is overlap in, in the transmission. While A is sending to B, X continues sending to A. So there is an overlap, two packet overlap. If I have five packet message, then there is even bigger overlap which means that I can send the whole data in less time but then at some point when the header becomes as big as the data itself I'll have no advantage so you'll see here in the in the last example we actually took longer time to send the data from x to y 
right so that's what we are trying to do here so uh, another comparison similar to what i drew here um you will see here that in circuit switching we have to spend some time doing the call setup right so we do the call setup which is a message that is sent from one node to another to another and says book book a circuit book a circuit book a circuit right so we have to send a message from one to two asking it to book a circuit and you will see here there is a propagation time and there is also the time to send the entire message once the circuit is booked we're sending a message to another node so the circuit from two to three is booked and then another message to book the circuit from three to four so we need three messages to book the three links the final node sends a message all the way back so you see here there is no interruptions why because the circuit is established at this point so we can send data straight from one end to another we don't have to packetize it right so we send it and we don't have to do processing in the middle so you see here a straight line going all the way back to the node one telling it that circuit is done um, set up so now you can send your data so we'll see here that the data is sent as one bulk we don't have to packetize it once the data is uh, received we can send an acknowledgement and by the acknowledgement we can turn off turn off the circuit we can can release the circuit so the circuit can be used for somebody else right during this time all three links were booked and they cannot be used by anybody else if i use the same links but we we'll use packet switching this time. So with packet switching, uh, actually virtual packet switching. So with virtual packet switching, I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to book a circuit. So I send the message to three. Here, there is no direct link like here. Why? Because I'm still using packet switching infrastructure. There is no circuit we are doing a virtual circuit but there is no actual circuit so we are still sending packets back as packets right and then we're sending packet one packet two packet three you'll see here there are overlap so as as soon as packet one is received by two it can be sent to three in the meantime one can send packet two to two and so on so we have some overlap here right and then finally the acknowledgement compare these two you will see that we sort of used longer time here right and finally packet switching packet switching does not require call setup there is no call setup so we are sending packets and the nodes decide which link to use and they will use them and we see here the overlap if we compare the three techniques side by side we'll see that um, we have the call setup time which takes a long time remember when i talked about uh, circuit switching i said one of the disadvantages is there is a call setup time you see here a longer time used just to establish the circuit itself even though the user data doesn't take that much right compare that to packet switching it took less time because the time was sent and used entirely to send the data there is no call setup virtual circuit seems to be taking the longest because we need to do the call setup and then we need to send the data and then we need to do the acknowledgement here the in the packet switching we ignore the acknowledgement but i think we we have to uh, here the acknowledgement was used mainly to turn off or to release the circuit so there is an acknowledgement happening for packets but the acknowledgement here is just for 
for the final termination of the circuit right so here we we in the packet switching we assume that there will be some acknowledgement as well the acknowledgement will be local so when two um, um, want to acknowledge one it will send an acknowledgement here right where my cursor is pointing and then the final acknowledgement will come from here and the final acknowledgement comes from here so it doesn't have to go all the way to the source okay so that's uh, all we need to know in chapter or lecture 10 um, and uh, that's the end of this lecture and I'll talk to you in the next one.